Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu, of course. I've got Jared Jessup here, and fellow black belt and best friend with me. And we were talking about some grips. We get a lot of questions in classes a lot of times about grips. What kind of grip do I use in this kind of position? What do I use for this hold? What do I use for this connection? And so we want to give kind of the, the easiest kind of breakdown that we can over some like hand-to-hand -hand different grips that you might use, a couple to avoid, and then a couple of what I'm actually grabbing onto him. Um, I think to start out, making the distinction between using like what we call sometimes a C-clamp or a monkey, or I'm sorry, human grip versus like a monkey grip. And why we would use one and not the other. I'm gonna grab something that I need to like articulate, twist, turn, anything like that. Or if I'm gonna push, that's gonna be a thumb grip because that's better for pushing, it's better for twisting and rotating. Um, if I need to get farther around the limb, maybe like it's a bigger part of the limb here, the thumb is gonna become a hindrance and it's gonna create an opening that's not gonna be as good for guarding it. So in that case, maybe I need instead to go more of a monkey grip or a thumbless grip to get farther over where I'm actually going all the way around a little deeper. Uh, that's This monkey grip here is also gonna be better for scooping. So human for pushing, monkey for scooping or getting all the way around something. I would also think if I'm using this, this grip that um, I wanna have as much control as possible so when I grip, it's, it's, it's around the wrist, and I think about my hand almost like a blanket, one, two, three, four. And that's gonna lay over the top of his hand to help give me some control at the joint, right? So I'm not just grabbing the arm and it's arm strength versus arm strength, but this actually gives me some uh, articulation and control of what's going on. Yeah, that diminishes the power of my arm movement a lot whenever he gets right there on that connection here and he's actually making some bend in that wrist. Yeah, that's a big difference in the control point. So on the other one, the cupping, I want to keep in, in, in mind all the different directions that he can be moving. He can move forward, back, left, right, up, down. And so I want to use my grips and my sensitivity to be able to control to monitor as many different of those directions as possible, right? And I want to use my connections in a way that, that, that doesn't make, uh, that doesn't lend to me giving him my foundation, but is ultimately uprooting him, right, through my connections. So, uh, so my grips can be helping me do that. So that kind of breaks down a little bit if you really think about those two concepts, about using the thumb grip here, that C-clamp, or using this, and when you might want to use those and distinguish them. That's kind of going to give you a grading performance whenever you're in a certain position and you get confused about it. Now let's talk about connections that I make with my own hands, and like whenever I put my hands together, whether this is me getting a clinch with Jared here like this, or me kind of hugging around a limb or something like that. Um, Basically, the strongest connection that I can make between my two hands, essentially, uh, and all, this, this has context matters and everything too, but it's gonna be the gable grip. The gable grip is when I go over the thumb here and over the blade like this. This is not this one. That's a big distinction. It's this grip here is the gable grip, named after uh, a famous wrestler, Dan Gable, of course. So um, this is gonna be one of the strongest ones because from here I'm activating lats, shoulders, arms, core, more uh, larger muscle groups here. If I just switched out to this, what we used to call a preacher grip, where we're going palm to palm and the thumbs are on the outside, this offers nothing strength-wise over it. It actually diminishes the strength of the connection a lot because now I'm concentrating more on the squeeze of forearms and smaller muscle groups. So this is pretty much always preferable over this grip here. Um, now, sometimes though the only problem with this is it may not allow for like the biggest flexion of the wrists. So you may have to do something else, right? So some, some other kind of grip. Yes, so, so well, uh, to, to hit on this uh, preacher's grip, grip again, you can think the a lot of times the way out of the grip is, is through the weakest part of the structure. And so it's gonna be through here. So if I've got a grip trap, I've made on both sides very weak control. Whereas this allows me to use the larger portion of the form and like two big hooks yeah. right there hanging. Now, another thing to consider with, with this type of grip is, is rather than just squeezing with the grip, I can think about how I position the rest of my body to maintain control. So if I've got a grip here, I can drop the shoulders in towards the knuckles to, to help manage the space uh, within the grip that I'm using. So um, uh, so that's gable, what about like uh, S, S grip? grip? Why would we wanna use the S grip sometimes maybe rather than the gable? Uh, in my estimation of it, this is gonna allow us probably the most flexion of the wrist. So if I have to do something where I'm gonna have to really turn my wrist, one I think about a lot of the time is like, if I'm gonna do like a, a no-gi baseball bat choke, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna have to have a lot of torque on that here. So I'm gonna have to really be able to move that wrist a lot. Gable grip is gonna be really difficult for me to be able to do that. So I may wanna to elect to something like that. Or if I'm trying to get a clinch around somebody and they're a larger person, whether it's like, uh, a front clinch, side clinch, rear clinch, whichever one it is, and I can't quite get that connection, probably the next best would be this. Uh, from If I can't get my gable, it'd probably be this one right here. So the S grip is gonna be powerful for those reasons there, and that's gonna allow you a little bit more mobility, and still give you a lot of strength too, because I am creating those hooks. They're just smaller hooks than the gable here. The, the just standard kind of, I usually call this a guillotine grip, because you're typically gonna like hold that like you're gonna do a guillotine. 
This is gonna be good for making initial connections and uh, whenever I'm catching like a, a clinch. Sometimes just this buckling in like that and then keeping that clinch reserved for me like that is gonna be helpful. And a lot of times if I'm gonna rescue this arm from danger, that's gonna be the grip that I'm gonna use. But it's not the most technical thing in the world and it can be thumb or it can be no thumb, but it's, it's gonna be something that's gonna offer you some strength. I think typically you're gonna prefer the gable if you can manage to get it um, or even the S grip. But yeah, that's a good honorable mention. Yeah, and this this uh, this grip, whether you're using the the thumb or no thumb, you can see it's the the uh, we talked about the, the initial grips being this um, or like this, right? So so that's me being connected to the opponent. I can also be connected to myself, making a structure, right? And uh, as I connect myself and make a, a, a structure, that will allow me to either um, contain or, or hold off energies. Yeah, right? something you might want to use for framing in, yeah. in, that, in that response too. So whether I'm scooping this toward me with like a thumbless grip or pushing it away to make that frame. So that's another consideration too whenever you're making that connection. Um, one I will give kind of like a, a weird kind of like maybe fourth runner up thing and this is an interesting grip and it's not one that's most commonly used but it's called a three finger grip and what's going to happen there is where I'm going to take these three fingers separate the index and put my thumb between those and then from there I'm going to squeeze now Jared mentioned before that on this one here I'm making the largest opening so that's going to make a weak kind of connection on that creature grip but this actually seals that that connection up a little bit and I can make a pretty tight squeeze this is also gonna allow me a little bit more articulation of the wrist on one side. So you'll see this come in handy on certain things like certain rear kind of chokes, sometimes on a short choke, sometimes on the nogi baseball bat choke. This can be a handy, uh, pun intended, a handy grip to use. <laughs> yeah, this one was typically made famous um, by Judo Jean LaBelle. He would use this grip a whole lot on his, you'd see him almost exclusively on his rear naked chokes and stuff like that, he would use this grip. So this is a, a kind of an interesting grip and one you might wanna play around with. And if you use this grip, I'd like to hear from you in the comment section and like let me know what some good uses for this and why you might prefer this over Gable or S or something else but um, anyway guys that's a, a little bit of a grip guide um, just going based on like when I might want to use something and, and try to stay away from something else but I appreciate Jared being here on this video with me and having this discussion and let me know what you think about it guys like subscribe share all that stuff appreciate you watching